Guys, so many audiophile companies try to make wireless earbuds, but they just fail at the basics and often even on their core competence, sound. So how does Biodynamic do? Because these birds, they ain't free. Goedendag, we're DHRME, doing handsome reviews like music to ears. All right, guys, before you pay your dinaros to Biodynamic for the free bird, what does the $200 get you in the box? The box itself is very nicely packaged and presents in a nice plasticless shell. And inside there's a lot. To start off with, you get a ton of tip options. Three sizes of foam tips and five sizes of silicone tips. The foam tips are also nicer than what you get with the Sony. Very pliable once you squeeze them with some force. These silicone tips do well too. They come with an oval shape that prioritizes comfort. For a solid seal, we'd recommend go for the foam tips. But for comfort, we would recommend the silicone tip. But that's not to say that they don't fit well. Here's a banana test to prove it. And it's nice to have the choice in the box. Very few companies do this. And also a shout out to that orange color. We are all about it. If you like it comfortable in bed, you don't want to wear too much. And that includes these earbuds since they stick out a little bit and we don't think they'll work for side sleepers. Staying on the superficial, these buds look kind of nifty with that band running across the face of the earbuds and the LED indicators add a nice design element. They come in two colors, the sleeker black and the white that we have here. The buds are IPX4, so you can feel fairly confident of using these to work out in liquid full but dust free zones, since the X means extra useless at resisting dust. And speaking of the face of these buds, that's where the touch controls are housed. Let's start with the basics. The touch controls are very responsive and we think that the hardware is quite good. But what good is hardware without good software? And here we think that the Biodynamic could have done better. To begin with, they seem to like this gesture of tapping once and then holding. It's how you control volume and how you pair the buds once they're in the case. Pretty non-standard and takes some getting used to. The touch controls are not individually customizable, but Biodynamic has made the choice to give you two sets of controls, complete and focus, one with volume and one without. Not quite sure what that's about. Oh, and speaking of volume, one notch of volume adjustment is like two to three clicks on a phone. Not great. And from an audio company, we would have expected more finesse here. The case is a bit bigger than the average case, but still quite pocketable. It also supports wireless charging, which is always great for topping up that battery. What's also great is that battery life. In our battery rundown test, we hit just under eight hours with ANC on and APTX adaptive enabled. Now those are solid numbers. The most real life example of this was when we were using these buds with five to 10% battery remaining at a cafe. And you know what? The Lex Friedman podcast ran for a good one hour. Incredible. I mean, overall, sure, Biodynamic advertises 11 hours, but credit where it's due. A real life eight hours is better than an advertised 11 hours. What, what did I just say? Cancel that. Sure, Kevin, let's cancel that noise. When it comes to active noise cancelling, these buds are a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, the good news is that the ANC does well with low end noise. It eliminates more noise than the Sony Link Buds S, for example, when it comes to low level engine rumble. However, ANC lets in a bit too much of the mids and almost accentuates the higher frequencies. So the final effect is almost like a kind of transparency mode for certain sounds. When it came to using these buds in windy conditions, nothing really seemed to counter the wind. We even tried changing the mode to off rather than ANC, but still there was plenty of wind being piped in. If that's your use case, then it might be good to look at something else. Overall, we put it in tier B. And B stands for bear dynamic also in terms of transparency for us, because even though the clarity was quite good, the overall volume levels were lower than many other buds we've tried. We put it at the same level as the Soundcore Liberty 4, very much a tier B. You did feel like the outside world was being let in, but much softer to the extent that this was fine for maybe listening to loud announcements, but not necessarily to have a conversation comfortably. It's by no means bad, just not stellar. And just to note, you don't get any sort of controls or adjustments to the level of ANC and transparency. What you hear is what you get. Where audiophile companies have failed us in the past when it comes to true wireless earbuds, 
has been reliability. Now, this is also a very difficult thing to test in general, because the day after our review of the Techniques AZ80 dropped, the buds started acting a bit weird. But in our time with the free bird, we've had a very solid connectivity with the app. No dropouts, even when switching between devices. Speaking of switching devices, there's no multipoint on this, but you guys know our position on this. If you have exactly two devices, multipoint is useful. But if you're living that multi-device life, having a pull connection feature where you select the earbuds from the Bluetooth device list to immediately connect, that is infinitely more valuable. Bayern Dynamic is a bit funny about this. They've even branded it calling Barge in Dynamic Connect. Must we brand everything, guys? Really? In that case, we're calling you guys the DHRME Army. Thank you for your service. But still, that's a feature we love and these buds come with it. You also get Google Fast Pair on board and there's a wear sensor that you can use to play or pause your music based on if these buds are in your ears. It worked pretty reliably for us. There are some more extras like Amazon Alexa built in. Sure, there's also a low latency mode for you gamers out there, but in general, like watching videos on YouTube, we didn't notice any latency. Oh, and the voice prompts are either in English or German. Jawohl. The only little but we have is that the app doesn't show up as Bayer Dynamic or Free Bird. But me, my, am I, why, why? The Bayer Dynamic actually did fairly all right for calls in a noisy situation. The noise suppression is decent and it isolates the voice pretty well. In wind, it struggled though. Admittedly, we did put it up against a heavy hitter, the Sony Link Buds S. A gentle breeze should still be all right as our full samples for our Icicle and above members and patrons show. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Testing, testing. One, two, three. The link buds has been... In terms of Fachman controls, the biodynamics giving us the bird. On the buds, you can only accept, reject, cycle, and end calls. No mute controls. Volume controls do work on calls though, if you're using the complete set of controls. So sound, this is what you came here for, right? In terms of sound, these bring big sound. My God, that bass, I was really not expecting that as a you know recording company, I'd expect it more of a neutral tuning, but that sub bass is boom, boom in your face. Did it affect the overall sound signature though? Well, surprisingly not really. You know, one of our very favorite sounding earbuds in terms of true wireless earbuds is the Sony WF-1000XM4. And these really rival those. Well, maybe boosting up some treble frequencies a bit so that the sound is a bit more open. I do slightly prefer the timbre in the Sony's though. And the buyers can, I can't believe I'm saying this, come across more bass heavy. On a non-Snapdragon sound Android phone using just APTX, they do sound pretty decent too, but the max volume is a bit lower than on APTX Adaptive. Overall, these are pretty loud, but not the loudest, and most of the Sony wireless earbuds, for example, or the status between 3A and C, deliver much higher peak volume. But again, fair warning, these are plenty loud if you're not hard of hearing or don't have very quiet recordings. The sound stage is pretty wide and overall these buds sound great. Albeit sometimes at lower volumes, they tended to sound a bit bland. So they're not taking that uh, Fletcher Munson curve into account. The EQ shift while moving from normal to ANC definitely adds a bit more low end, but otherwise the sound character stays pretty much unchanged. So if you're someone who likes a slight V shape in their sound, these are a very good choice. And for an even more V shape, there's a preset literally called V-shape <laughs> that pimps up the two edges of the V even more. Sure, the mids get a bit scooped out, but yeah, that's what a V-shape is. Or maybe we're just getting old and can't hear the treble frequencies as well anymore. Oh, and speaking of compensating for your hearing or lack thereof, there's Sound Profile, a hearing assessment that makes you listen to a beep through the sounds of crickets mating in the jungle and determines how well you hear. And here we were super happy with the results. You can even choose how much of the adjustment you can apply. Uh, even using the maximum richer setting, stuff sounded good. The only shame is that to save your results, you have to sign up with a Mimi account. Mimi not signing up. And what this means is if you switch to another phone without logging into Mimi, the hearing adjustments do not get transferred over. Only your EQ changes get transferred over. And that's the last downside of the buyer dynamic in terms of sound. There is no custom EQ, just presets. Good ones, mind you, but still limited if you're a tweaker. 
So guys, we won't compare these buds to any other we have because we're working on a premium wireless earbuds video. So yeah, stay subscribed and if you want that video, comment below, I have come, I want some premium. But let's go back to the question at the beginning of this video. Has Biodynamic failed at making wireless earbuds? Has another audiophile company run up against DHRME? Well, unlike some others, we're happy to report, absolutely not. These buds sound good and are surprisingly feature rich. They have a bug free app and top of the line battery life. Unless you want the best ANC and transparency and make calls in very challenging conditions, we don't think you can really go wrong with these buds. But whether these are the best true wireless earbuds money can buy, that's a story for another video. Buying these premium buds is great for content but terrible for our wallets. But that's what we did for this video. We try to keep it honest and we don't accept money from the companies whose products we review. So thanks for continuing to support the channel as a YouTube member and a patron. And Tested Tier members, you're in for a giveaway. And if you're not a member yet, you can still join and get in on that giveaway. You might become a buyer of the buyer. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste.